Stretch Armstrong is a prisoner of war. What are they going to do to him? What do you think they're going to do to him? <laughs> they're going to vacuum him up. That's right. This is how they deal with people in North Korea. He went in and Stretch Armstrong tried to kidnap Kim Jong-un. <laughs> and he ended up like this. But there's attack up there. Oh no. What's going to happen to Stretch Armstrong? Invincible stretching man. <laughs> I can't do the giggling. I'm sorry. Oh my god. I mean, I think he's... <laughs> I think it's the end of Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> goodbye, old buddy. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's dead. <laughs> Kim, he was no match for Kim Jong-un. This is what happens when you mess with the red state of North Korea. How are you doing? This is Chris Cartea, and welcome to the Owl Ranch episode 6, the Nerf news you can use. That's right. I am your host, Chris Cartea, and today's unrelated background image is Party Monster. I have a great challenge for all you heterosexual friends like me, uh... How long can you take to watch this film and sit in one sitting? How acceptable are you of different lifestyles? How acceptable are you of people that are different? I mean, I myself, sexually, I don't live a different lifestyle than most straight men. But I do live a different lifestyle, and that's Nerf guns. Okay, because I am a rebel. I am a loner. I am a drifter. I am an alcoholic. That's what I do, okay? Well, okay, maybe not so much an alcoholic anymore, but improved but nonetheless what i'm saying is um i really think that um it, there are different kinds of people in this world and i'm not just talking gay straight um uh, transsexual either i'm talking people with different lifestyles people who mod nerf guns people who work in fashion uh you watch let's say you watch a show like um the Housewives of Beverly Hills, okay? There's this one character in that show that I really like a lot, and her name's Lisa. Lisa lives in Camarillo, and she's the editor of Beverly Hills Magazine, okay? I think she's the chief editor, actually. And she's got such great taste, and she's always the one, the lady who has the best form and everything. And you know what? All she does is fashion. And she just says fashion, has good taste, has good, really polite. And you know what? We need those kind of people in this world. So if you think about it, different kinds of people are perspective. Now this here, Saint James St. James, that is one brilliant man. He Look at the stuff. Everything he wears, he's played by Tom Green, but everything he wears is just, ugh, you know? I mean, like, he designed it himself. He won, On one scene, he walks in with this suit, and it's clouds. It's just clouds. That's just so cool. Like, I would never dare wear that. But, you know, that's just, wow, you know? And without people like that, we wouldn't have the, the kind of fast cars, the elegant clothes, the stuff like that. Uh, honestly, honestly. And I really think that party monsters have really big kind of test. And, and when I meet a friend after a while, I usually have them sit through this movie and see how long they last. And usually it's about 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Okay, so anyway, let's get to the news, shall we? Okay, first off, last week I made a mistake. Um, I I want to be, you know, literally correct. And I had heard that that, um, that Caliburn was just a Caliburn attachment that was for a Nerf sniper gun. Well, not so. In actuality, it's an HPA blaster built by Wolf 3D. Here is some footage right here. I mean, look at this thing. It's got a nice, nice, what looks like a 3x9 scope. And then look at this brass here. Yeah. I mean, to really turn this from a caliber, and wow. I mean, what a great adaptation. Look at that muzzle brake. Wow. As you can see, it's pretty cool. It is, um, the, it's an HPA system that comes from a 4,500 PSI tank, about um, 300 feet per second. You just prime it, lock it back like a forward, you fire, brass breech, brass barrel, um, 
it, it runs off an XBZ tank uh, to begin with, and it's pretty cool. Now, here's what I like about this, okay, myself personally, is, um, I mean, look, I, I'm a pretty big guy. I, I know a lot of people can't, can't really tell, but I'm, you know, six feet tall, and compared to most average people, I'm pretty strong. I'm pretty big, okay? Well, why does it take a strong big guy to play Sniper? Think about it. That's kind of like... I like these kind of you know these kind of HPA blasters because they close that gap. They make it easier for people to enter the realm of sniping, just like an an LSK4B does. Or um, an L there's another guy who bought an LSK4B and he's pulling about 50 average uh, meters. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, and there's other people like you know there's 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 Alan Torbrino. Oh, see Nerf. He's 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 getting big into the uh, Nerf Jedi gut, you know the whole thing with with sniping. Uh, we got my friend Herbert, I mean, and this guy I talked to, Wolfpack 3D. He he, he we just instantly hit it off. It was like me and Herbert who made the Bird of Prey uh, about a month or so back, and he uh, yeah, it's so cool, you know. It's just like wow, yeah. So. Um, it's really turning into a cool cool set of fellas, like I said in that one vid. Uh, and I, I like that. I hope that, you know, the sniper community, the nerf sniper community, uh, becomes uh, a community that everybody's a sport, everybody's a bro. If, if one of us needs help, we help each other out. If we, have, if we have differences, we both pick up a mag strike and shoot each other down and whoever wins wins sort of thing. I hope it, it turns into that. And not like trolling and all that stuff and everything, which I think with the right attention it will. Okay, um, the really excellent blaster. A commission from him, um, if you want one, is about six hundred dollars. Put in mind this is HBA, so in actuality that's a good price for an HBA blaster. And um, you want to get into sniping, and you want and you don't want the heavy prime, you don't have the big arms like I do. Go for it. Knock yourself out. You know. In other news, um, Orange Mod Works is doing this um, sort of Project Orange uh, campaign. Now this is really interesting because it's a crowdfunding thing. Now for years they've been doing pre-orders and they've been doing stuff like that and a lot of people have accused that of just crowdsourcing. Well why not just, if people accuse of being crowdsourcing, why not just crowdsource? <laughs> Make it official, you know? Put up your ideas, put up your campaigns, see what's up, see what works. Now I didn't put up a campaign quite, but if you go on their, on their forum on Facebook, you will see a couple posts from me. And what my post was is the Fire Strike Kit. That it can be done. And it can be done better. Now let me explain. Because I actually have a couple proofs of concepts. Okay, so. Um, one thing that I said was the plunger rod. Now every one of these, I have two of these. Okay, this is the Orange Mod Works plunger rod. And as you can see, I've modified it with two layers of fiberglass epoxy and crazy glue. Um... The one that's on my Fire Strike actually has two bolts going through it, epoxy all the way through. And because I'm running 23K, that's still really light. I made some suggestions. One, the Delrin catch on a Fire Strike works great. Now, of course, a Delrin catch on a Fire Strike is kind of stapled in there because of the way they do their system. So I, I made a suggestion, you know, supply a new one out of Delrin, not, not composite Delrin. And two, make the plunger rod out of polycarbonate. Now, on this thing, there were... You can't see it now, or either one of them, because I've covered them both up because they were weak spots. But there was a diamond pattern back here. Unfortunately, the crest of the diamond pattern back here, okay, was right on the edges, wide, right where this catch was. And it made it so it broke real easy. Now, if they had just done something like, instead of making it the widest part of the triangle reinforcement, and if you ever get one, you'll see it. They only made like a hundred of them, but you'll see it. And if they move that up to a point where it had more material, it wouldn't break. It would actually do good. And if they made that out of polycarbonate, it would be a lot better. Also, this, you notice the head is kind of high, okay? Now, let me show you on my proof of concept here. This is an Ultramax pistol. What it does is it tends to make the rod dip when you, when you, when you prime it, okay? And because of this, and you can see this one's also... Fiber tape reinforced, or it's filled with epoxy. It's got a bolt in the back. I took off the prime handle, so it's a little bit more like an M16. Okay, like an M16 prime handle, like that. So, at any rate, 
Uh, if they did that, those those things, they made the trigger, instead of making it that soft, rubbery kind of plastic, they made it out of, out of metal. And also instead of soft, rubbery plastic, made this out of Delrin, and did a coupler system like this as a stage two, then that'd be great. Now, why didn't I put up a full-blown... Oh, yeah, right through the guardboard, shit. Yeah, this is, I forgot, this is doing like 230 feet per second. It's fast. This is a 23 kilogram fire strike. This is like my best fire strike I ever built. It's fast. Um, why didn't I put up a proposal? Well, one, because they already have the existing part. Okay? And all they would really have to do is do those few changes to it. Um, on, on, the, on the tooling, because this wasn't, um, this wasn't an ABS polycarbonate type of tooling. I suspect it was some other type of fast tooling that was used to make um, to make urethane parts. Um, basically, I would just move this grid pattern over. Okay, I, I would do this off like carbonate, and you can just move this up. So, I mean, like, and like SolidWorks, if you have the files already, it's very easy to do, okay? I keep the hook, I keep the two screws, I keep everything except for those changes. I would just simply make this out of a different material, okay, make it out of Delrin. Uh, polycarb and Delwin work really well together, by the way. Um, and I wouldn't change the dimensions of the catch, nothing. Except maybe, nah, I wouldn't change that. I would keep it. i keep it. Keep it. Yeah. Um, as you can see on mine, I have a deeper groove. So it sits in like so. And if you want to do something like remove this to here to here, there it is. Free advice. June, if you do it, I won't charge you anything. Don't worry. It's just free advice. I would just rather see the community have it. Just to have it, okay? Um, but at any rate, yeah. So this would be stage one. Just the rod and the catch and the handle, and that's it, right? And the O-ring, of course. Stage two would have this metal trigger and a coupler barrel. Now, what I was talking about was a little bit more, okay, this is brass into brass. You can't really do brass into brass, sure. But what you could do is you can do a coupler that necks up to 0.625 aluminum or let's say 15 millimeter no i wouldn't go 15 millimeter i go 16 millimeter 16 millimeter aluminum and then i would get an o-ring that would sit just higher than the aluminum and i would have two o-rings and i would have a coupler just just like that okay by doing that you now have a blaster that you can take out you can prime you can load huh this is a v3 i hope it doesn't explode on me and you and you can just you know fire it yeah, that's all you'd have to do, you know? So that's why I recommended that, you know? Because honestly, um, okay, stage two would be a little more advanced, would need some prototypes, but this is a proof of concept right here. The only thing you really need to do is not make it from Nerf parts and not make it brass. You make it, you make the sleeve fit inside the barrel with the two O-rings indented in the, in the inside of the barrel to hold it in. That's it, that's all. That's all you need, man, uh, right there. And then the whole plunger tube gets moved up, and it, and the whole thing has has a um, has a stay between here and here, and the whole thing mounts as one piece. Yeah, I think it'd be great. And the other thing is you can do it as a stage two. So for like right now, you can just do a few changes to this, make a small little injection molded thing, okay, and that's it, okay. And there's your stage one. And then a uh, few months from now, maybe half a year from now, you can make a stage two. And, and now that you have the hardware that can do the heavy yield to begin with, you can have the barrel to support it. I also mentioned that on this system, they shouldn't just have a five and a quarter removable barrel. They should also have like a three inch barrel. Because what that would do is that would make it so you can go lighter yield, eight, six K, eight K, 10 K, whatever. And you can um, and you can just muzzle load it, you know? You don't have to coupler load the whole thing. You can just have the barrel, uh, you can put it in like so, but then just put it in darts. I mean, that would be really, really cool. So anyway, on my last um, my last entry um, to the show, I wanted to mention a um, another Nerf personality. One obviously more popular than me. His name is Jangular, and Jangular has this new show called Nerf Life. I was watching it the other day. I was very impressed. Now the reason I was watching it was because a uh, um, associate of mine in Nerf. Uh, named Alice Coat Duck had made a pistol, and she was originally, I think she was originally going to make a bird of prey like that one, and I couldn't get her the wings and a few other things, because I am really bad at just shipping stuff out, and she made a monster, monster, uh, just freaking, wow, 
you know, monster rainbow pistol. All frames, all lights up on the inside. Ah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Really great cosmetic work. As you know, my cosmetic work, uh, I don't really care about my cosmetic work. It's more how effective the blaster is. But she did an incredible job. I'm very impressed. Um, and the, he test fired it and had a, a short barrel on it. And I heard from somebody that had a short barrel. Uh, maybe you can give him some advice. Maybe you can offer one over the barrels. I think the coupler three quarters just like the aluminum you use. So I'm like, okay, okay. So I'll message Yangular and uh, I'll go to one of his videos. I'll message him and say, hey, I can beg you another barrel if you'd like. And then you can keep it and feature it on the show. But he never got to back to me on that. He did get back to me on my comments that it was a great show. Because I watched the show I was like... Wow, and the way he does it, like he runs the errands to try to find the CPVC, but then goes to Home Depot and there's no CPVC, and he opens up packages and everything, and he exercises, uh, you know, warming up for end war. I just thought that it was just a very good way of doing a video, and, and from a director's point of view, uh, I, I really liked it. I really liked it. So do check it out. His Nerf Life series, it's turning out really good. Saturday, he does a, ner a new show, too. Kind of like mine, but mine's a little more unorthodox because, well, I'm a very silly, silly man. And that's, yeah, it's great, you know? And uh, Macaulay Culkin as Michael Allen. I mean, if anybody heard stories about Michael, uh, I tell you, you know, I tell you. So at any rate, this is Chris Cartea. I've been uh, working on my Nerf mods uh, for um, Armageddon. Getting everything ready, getting everything straightened out, getting everything running good. Um, it's been a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a chore. I got a couple of commissions I'm doing. I just started on the on a dual strike one. I'm finishing up on a Kronos one. Um, sending that out next week. Um, but I've been doing a lot of just revisions to my mod. So you'll see a lot of videos on that, uh, such as the uh, epoxy handled plunger rod on this thing. Now this was a challenge, and the reason it was a challenge was because this is meant to have a lot of flex. So when you take the flex out of it, of course, you need to redo the, the rod. You need to actually redo the actual catch. And the problem with that is, and let's put one of these version 3s in here that, as you saw in the last video, they don't work very well on a dual strike. Yeah. Um, because it, it's made to have flex, so when you fire it, it bends and fires. Well, now it has no flex to it whatsoever, and so it's just kind of like I had to change it. This is why I do stuff on my blasters first before anybody else's. It's responsibility. So if somebody requests something, something like that, I gotta try it first. It's only fair. I had to change this out because my long-lived uh, dual strike shell, I lost a couple of support ribs by the catch. I have to fix that. How do you fix it? Well, can you see the screws here? Right, so you just take another screw and you build it for for the catch, for the rod for the uh, for the rod catch, and basically that fixes it. But for the moment, I wanted to show this off. I was desperate, so I took one of my dual strikes. I have new in box. Look how long this barrel is, guys. It's wow, <laughs> powerful. And I had to literally trim the entire top of the catch off. Now, now on the dual strike, you have to trim. The front of it off and the top of it off because it's kind of rounded. They're trying to keep you from using a high power springs like an like an 18k turf. They don't want you to use an 18k 185 turf. But okay, this is a mega round. Ready? Oh, uh, 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 that that's got to be doing. I mean, I don't know if it's going any faster, but it appears to be. It's going very fast. So I've been working on stuff like this. I've been working on my pistols, just stuff. It's a very busy week, very busy week. I got about five weeks until Armageddon. I'm about a week left before my next meet. Oh, no, by the way, I guess that isn't the last thing. My next meet, uh, May 26th, Statland Elementary in uh, Glendora, 11 a.m. That will be the um, that will be the second warm up for Armageddon. I want to see if Alan Torino will do a third one in OC two weeks from then. I'm going to ask him about it. Or actually, I'll see this first, probably. Um, I was going to ask him at the meet, but there you go, Alan. I want to do a third meet. Uh, so, like Orange County, you know, someplace like, I don't know, Heritage, what was it called? Heritage Park? I forget. It's that one really cool park. I uh, one with the slides. What do they call it? I'm, I just woke up, so I'm just kind of like, need coffee. So, at any rate... Um, yeah, so if you could do a third meet, that'd be really good, like two weeks before RMS. So then we have like two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks 
and we're all buffing everything. Because I came home from my last meeting, and I was like, oh, God. Oh, I was dying, dude. I was just like, Jesus Christ, you know? So, uh, yeah. It was, it was, it was harsh. It was harsh. A uh, couple days. I mean, I need some Advil and everything else. I'm getting old for my old age. What can I say? Uh, but yeah, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock sniper school. So anybody wants to come in and work on their, their long range shooting, I'll be there at 10. And which means I got to get up an hour early just to get there, but that's okay. I'll do it just for you. And at any rate, this is Chris Cartier. Don't go changing and don't be stupid and take ketamine like these guys. You saw what happened to them, right? Just watch the movie, you'll get it. You know, <laughs> they were part of the Disco 2000 scene in New York. So, But it's, it's an interesting story. It's a fascinating movie. And if you got an open mind, an open mind does not just mean... It means lifestyle in general, and that's what I'm saying. Lifestyle in general. Any lifestyle. Anything. Nerf is a lifestyle. Uh, this is a lifestyle. Fashion. Lifestyle. Okay, drugs. Lifestyle. Drinking. Lifestyle. Uh, cars. Lifestyle. Sports. Lifestyle. Uh, music. I got an Eric Clapton Stratocaster sitting here. One day I'll play it for you guys. But for right now, uh, I've been out of music for a while. So, yeah, lifestyle. So, it, it's about respecting all this stuff. And I really hope that you do and you don't become some freaking Nazi like some people I know live down there. But, in any case, this is Chris Cartier. Don't you go changing. Or I'll find you. Wake up! Oh no! It's it's ah! Yeah, you've been a bad boy, or girl, or cat. Ah, whatever. I'm gonna go get some coffee. Take care. Peace out.